Today on The Riff, Jeremy and Justin start a series on North Point isms. I like this one. I hope you do too, because there are more to come. And if you don't like it, I'm sure next week will be better. Actually, I'm not confident in that, but I hope the episode at least makes you smile. We hope today is helpful and hopeful. Hello, Riff Raff. It is great to have you with us. Justin, are you with us today? Yeah, I'm with us. I'm with us. We, uh, Justin, Justin's a little giggly today. I am giggly, man. I don't know why. I don't know why. That's all right. Well, Uh, hey, we're glad to have you. And today, today is, uh, what we, what we like to call around here, Justin's Choice. Oh, yeah. It is the Riff. And, uh, we are here promising not to over-prepare going into this thing. This is off the cuff. Mm -hmm. This is is just bleed, just riff. So Justin, what are we riffing about today? All right, we've got a thing in the North Point systems called the isms. The isms. The isms. The North Point isms. They know some of the isms. They know a lot of the isms. So we're going to walk through all the isms. These isms are sayings that we might say in the halls uh of North Point Church. Yeah. Yeah, they might and hang on the walls. They might hang on the walls. Oof. Yeah, yeah. They, uh, but they're just they're just little sayings, pithy, cultural pieces, pithy little sayings, pithy, pithy. Sayings. Yeah, I learned that word from you, by the way. I really? never used pithy, let's say, four years ago. Yeah, and use it all the time now, all the yeah. time. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, little cultural handles that we've got, and uh, hopefully a couple of these can be helpful for you in your family. This could be some of these could be used in your family, for like me, Janae, Sydney, and Leanne. No, I'm, t- I'm talking about that, like a listener, like oh, a riff yeah, riff yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it could be used in a business. Could be used in a business. Absolutely. Um, could be used just for your life. You know, you're driving down the road, like personally as I'm driving. Around. This one, I'm talking about you personally. Yeah, yeah, uh, not the I riffraff. Hope it is. No. Yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna read the riff or the uh, the uh, the ism. Okay. And then you are gonna just riff on it. Fun game. Right. Let's do it. Let's riff on isms. Huh? Riff isms. So this riff could isms. Be, this could be a 10 minute episode <laughs> or Perfect. as I look at these, it could be 70 to 80 minutes or se- a series a or a series. series. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So little context. These are our, these are the cultural things that we want to experience as we work together at North point and we work on this mission together uh, through this community. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Let's do it. I feel like we're just going for this one. This is the quickest intro I've ever done. Uh, Usually we talk about stuff, and on this one it's just like, let's roll. And if we don't get back in and get right into it, this might not oh, any yeah, longer be the quickest. That's so true. All right, we're getting right in it. Oh, I'm excited. All right, North Point isms. North First Point one isms. right isms. here. Up top. Early wins. Late loses. Late loses. Do you know these? Ah. Wow, that's great. It's like Read you wrote em. some of them. Yeah. yeah, that's really interesting. Early wins, late <laughs> loses. Yeah, I just, that that ism for us as our team is uh, we don't want to be keeping people waiting. We talk about this. Um, if you're meeting a volunteer, uh, don't be late. Don't be on time. Uh, be a little early. Just just to communicate. Now it's old school. A lot of places uh, have that as an ism. But the whole thought there is we want even our actions, especially our actions, uh, to say something. To say, hey, I'm I've been excited to meet with you. Uh, excited to connect with this time and. And then when we we have a lot of meetings, we got a meeting culture, uh, especially with multi sites. And so with that, we just have to be able to uh, be predictable in our schedule. So early wins, late loses. You've always said that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, at least since 2012. Right. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, you said it for a while. Yeah, I was a little late to the game on that one. Listen, I feel like that was a good one. That was that was quick. Is like. I feel like we're going to get right through Don't these. Don't box me in. No, I'm I might not take my time. No, 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 okay. no. There's no such thing as servant leaders. There are only leaders. leaders. Oh! Okay, so servant leadership um, is, is a great concept, but I believe all leadership, if it's good leadership, is servant leadership. Bottom line is we have another idea that we talk a lot about, um, at North Point that we would point our arrows out. When we lead, we should be leading with somebody else in mind, the mission first and people always, that vibe, right? And so we always need to be pointing towards others. If I'm leading in a way that is entitled, uh, entitled uh, an attitude or uh, self-benefic, uh, self benefit, I was going to say self beneficiary. Um, Benefish works. It's ben- beneficial just to myself. If, if I'm doing something as a leader and I get the benefits of it, um, that's tough. I think in a church setting, 
I think for me, this is something that that I want to make sure is I have to be a servant leader um, because that's what any good leader is, is leading in a way not to be the best model or to be the, the person that is... Um, uh, in a position everyone else wants. Um, if I'm the one that benefits from my leadership, it's poor leadership. So do the people we're trying to serve benefit from my leadership? So little things like, um, you know, we, 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 need to, we need to always make sure that this organization, this job um, does not always uh, make importance of my role, of, of my life, um, so that's one way I have to apply this. How do we just serve others? Point mm. the arrow out. This has been helpful for me. Yeah. When I read it the first time years ago, I thought it was a little bit odd. Um, because yeah, I'm just like, what do you mean? There's no such thing as servant leaders. Just it, it, it takes a while for my brain to actually connect it. But I really like this one. And it's been helpful. I I went through, still going through a coaching program. And one of the things we have to do is you have to identify your work identity. Okay. So there's three identities that you have to identify. And I use this piece, right? So my, I'll share share with with you. Oh, please. Uh, (laughs) Keep it rolling. (laughs) Identity is uh, that I I chose is Sherpa. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But it's the idea of this whole thing, right? Because if you end up being the hero, um, as the leader, it's not necessarily the leader. Mm. It's the guide. The guide is the one that's that's leading. That's the one that's moving you along. Okay. That creates the hero. Okay. So, uh, and that's a lot of stuff like from Donald Miller, from Joseph Campbell, of, of the whole idea of the hero's journey that like a Yoda is the actual leader. It's not Luke Skywalker in Star Wars, right? The Yoda yeah. is the one that is, spoiler alert, dies at the end. I, sorry, I'm sorry. Are you talking prequel, old age, sequel? Old age, old age. Uh, well, this is, this, uh, well, I don't even know how to talk about yeah, it now. Prequel, tough. sequel, right? It'd yeah. be like episode, what is that, six? Six, or is yeah, it three? Six. It'd be six. It'd be six it, it used to be three, but now it's now it's six. six. Now it's six. Now I don't think yeah. it ever was called three. Even when you watched, I don't even know if they changed it. I wasn't alive Return back. Return of the Jedi. Yeah, Return of the Jedi. Yeah. So it's just the whole idea of this, you're consistently giving. Like That's what leadership is. So this has been awesome. I, I've, I like this one. So if you're a leader out there, um, I, we can we can even break that down into home, like like some traditional roles. Like I am the leader of this home. I'm like, right. well, um, no one's going to argue with you if you're truly a servant leader. Mm-hmm. Um, and we it should all, you know, benefit those around us. If I'm the leader at work, am what part of my job really is just benefiting me? Uh, what part of other people's efforts go to benefit me? And how much of it can can I tweak to just point toward the mission? It's great. Okay. That, was a, a, that one took longer. Yeah. I yeah. Uh, I, I don't know now. I, yeah, I don't. yeah. I'm just trying to throw you off. I don't want you to predict. <laughs> like, you know, do I have time to run in and do this errand at Walmart or do no, I stay in my car you and don't. keep listening? Leave, so, I, I would yeah. say leave one earbud in, just yep. the left. Yep. Get your ear Why are you giggling? Yeah. <laughs> that's the riff. And then right. they're going to be like, you listen to? Yeah. It's so it's crazy. Great, well, it's we've just... had several encounters of people yes. who <laughs> met that way. All right. Next one. In order to lead, you have to rep. Oh, I love it. I Rep love it. this one. Okay. So and that, that's our culture is because um, we have, we have uh, um, an executive team, team leads, uh, campuses, and, and um, a different uh, ministry uh, areas of focus, Dream Center. Um, we have so many different places that are all focused throughout the week doing their thing. Um, we don't have, we would never waste everybody's time by making everybody be in a room to be able to have the conversation for every decision. Um, so what we do is we have, we rely on our structure. Our org chart is a communication chart, all right? And we don't want it to be a power chart. We want it to be an organization chart or a communication chart. And so, um, with that, we have to make sure we're communicating well. Otherwise we lose the why along the way, right? Um, because we can say, Hey, this this edict came from on high. You know, Jeremy wants us to all starting Tuesday. To, nah, that's what I right? start every conversation yeah. with. Yeah. Hey, Jer- guys, Jeremy, Jeremy, said, Jeremy yeah, I said, hey, guys. I know. It's Jeremy. A, it's a pain in the uh, tush. Oh, but Jeremy said it. <laughs> yeah. Jeremy said it. So, and that can happen, right? Like if, if we don't take time. So, so what we, we teach our team is let's rep this. And rep is an acronym 
for uh, the, the lowest level of leadership is to repeat what someone told you to tell someone else. I can repeat it. Um, we're going to change this, you know, from now on. Okay. Explain is the second R E. So rep is, is, is repeat something. Explain is saying, Hey, here's why so-and-so thinks we should change this. But P is to promote it. Uh, is, is P, so R-E-P, so repeat something, explain something, and now promote something is be able to say, hey, here's why we're excited about this. Here's why, here's what this is going to uh, do. Here are the changes we anticipate this is going to bring. Here's why this is going to be a win for our organization. And so what we always say is until you're ready to R-E-P, that's the highest level of leadership, promote something. Otherwise we can just send an email. But when you can lead with a Y in your communication downstream of information, um, now we're repping the vision, not just repeating, explaining, or promoting the vision. And that way allows everyone in the organization to feel the why, uh, which hopefully the why is what started the change in the first place. That's great. And we've made a huge emphasis on making sure that if you're going to be the person that's repping it, ask the questions to get to the point where you yes. can actually rep it, to get to the promote. And there's going to be preferential pieces that you might not like or agree with, but I hope that you're able to see the why, yep. right? So that's because if you walk into a space and you're just like, you feel like you're repping it, it again, it's just repeating it. You yeah. got to own it. So this yeah. is all about ownership. It's about understanding the why. It's a good one. I, I love that point that you bring up because if if someone, let's say we're talking about whether it's a service time or a, a, a new format for a summer programming or anything, and, and we're having some crucial conversations, um, that's why we need everybody in the room to be all in the room. Okay, if you're in the room, you're in the room for a meeting. And so let's communicate it now. And it doesn't help the organization for you to communicate it downstream, right? Is and not because like what you disagree, how dare you disagree? It's like, no, we so value your disagreement. Please share it with us because that's the time for us to make the impact. Right. That's the time for it to, to flavor the whole meal. So anyway, rep the sucker. Rep, rep it, rep mo, rep mo. Re- <laughs> Next one is make people smile. If that's mm. all you do, it's probably enough. That is good. Mm. Uh, you know, a, a great example of this. Let's say you're opening a door on the weekends. Uh, let's say Me? you're, yeah. Let's okay. say you're opening the door. On I the can weekends. see myself there. Yeah. Um, uh, let's say, uh, someone you love is maybe me, um, is okay. doing right. check-in for a Wednesday night, uh, <laughs> dream center dinner. Um, well, any program. Okay. If you can make someone smile, what you're doing is you're making this whole thing human. Right. And, and so, uh, if we can make someone smile, that's the connection with someone. That's what we're trying to do. And so, uh, that is a big deal. If people that you're encountering are smiling in any of our programs, any of our, um, um, any of our ministries, um, that that probably means that you're helping create a wel- welcoming atmosphere. That doesn't mean we don't talk about tough things. Doesn't mean we're not having t- uh, tough conversations. But that's one of our isms because so much of what we do is creating an experience where they feel comfortable, no matter where they come from, and that's a great indicator when of uh, if someone feels comfortable is smiling. That's great. Uh, you are not an author. <laughs> and then we had to add um, unless your name's Preston Ulmer. It says most of you. Yeah. Because there's two authors, Jeremy, and this goes back right up here. There's no such thing as servant leadership. Okay. You're an author. Okay. <laughs> okay. You I'm are a published let, author. No, I'm not a published author. I'm a self published author. You're a self published author. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's true. That's I I mean, I love you being humble about it. Zondervan, this. quit emailing. Quit me. emailing. You but know. When we talked about incident waiting to happen, I believe yeah, we, that. Sales, yeah, we, we've already sold three. Yes, since last fall, right? Yeah, so that's glory to God, right? That, yeah, that's it's, not, it's not, it's me. not, it's not. I'm just a broken vessel <laughs> that He chooses to flow through sometimes, right? Yeah, I wrote it. Not a big deal. Does it change lives 13 years later? Sure, uh, a couple. Yeah, right. just a couple. So big yeah, and really just a couple. Yeah, but but still. So yeah, you're not an author. Most of you walk yeah. through this one. Okay, so. Bottom line is, yeah, that's probably more of my personality. I don't know if this is a key to winning success and you might want to punt this from your isms if you're taking notes at home. I just don't like reading long emails. So especially when it's informational. So my thought is uh, on this is let's be, let's keep it to bullet points. Okay. Bullet points. Just get to the point when let's be direct. Let's be clear. Um, we don't want to have to have the pressure of here's four nice things I love about you. But what I really wanted to do is get to this third paragraph and hope you're still reading. Okay. So just hit 
get it. Um, and now we, since then, now we're not an email culture. Uh, <laughs> We are a base camp culture. Thank you, Jason Fried. Um, <laughs> but um, but even with that, is just get to the point. Get to the point. Get to the point. So, yes. Um, and again, that doesn't mean for those of you listening, you can't send emails, those kind of things. That is an internal, let's just be direct. Let's say what we want to say. Let's say it with dignity and clarity. I love it. And even with base camp, like if you read their stuff from Jason and David, which are the guys that created. I'm sorry, David. I just gave all the credit to Jason. No, it's fine. He, he was, he got upset, but he's, he feels good now. I know they're listening. Yeah. Um, but even with their books, they talk about how they had their first manuscript and then they cut like some, like 20 some thousand words out of the next one. And then the publisher wouldn't even publish it because there was less and less and less. So they ended up adding pictures. (laughs) But their whole thing is like, we're going to cut, 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 and get to the actual point of what's needed. And just revision after revision after revision, you end up with a better product. It's clearer. It's it's easier to read. So The pastor of North Point has always said, less is more. (laughs) So true. So true. (laughs) That's Andy Stanley reference for you, but I like the joke (laughs) that that was me. All right. People want a friend and a job. This is about being known and needed. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think I think that's what, uh, as a general rule, um, we all want is we want to be able to uh, connect with others, and we want to be able to do something uh, that we feel is meaningful. Um, so, uh, you know, at North Point, as we engage people, we're not trying to just give people tasks. We're not trying to just uh, get through a service. What do we need? How many do we need? Um, uh, what we want to do is be able to use even serving, whether it's throughout the week or on the weekend. Serving is actually an opportunity to grow in community with each other and to do something significant. So you can have community that doesn't do anything significant and you're just shooting the breeze. That's fun. You can do something significant and not have community. Uh, A lot of us do that every Saturday afternoon in our own yards, okay? Um, But when you can combine community and um, and mission, uh, I think I think that's easy for um, uh, significance to be felt. And that's what we want to do. I think it's great. I think, it, and when you're leading a volunteer as well, yeah. I mean, as staff, Absolutely. it's a big thing for us. As <laughs> it's, it's just, it's crucial to have that person understand that they are known and they are needed. I will say there's probably some people listening who are thinking, man, that wasn't my experience. And, and that, that hmm. really hurts um, that that is true uh, because I, um, I know how disgusting and disappointing it would feel like if you're serving a mission, serving a mission, and then for some reason you stop serving and you don't hear from somebody. Yeah. Because, and that's what we would say to our staff. What you're, what you're saying, if we don't follow up on people who disappeared, <laughs> ghosted us, yeah. what we can feel, that's, a, that's a one, one perspective. We're saying, oh, you're valuable based on what you did for us. And that's terrible is what we want to do is we want to know you. And so I know for some of you, it's just, uh, unfortunately, that's probably some people's experience is, man, I feel like it was one-sided. And we, while that can naturally happen sometimes in organizations, why is an ism? We want to fight against that. And we want to have a culture. We aspire to be a culture where that's less common. And what would be more common is we care about the person we're working alongside of, mm-hmm. that we do significant things and we do it in community. That's great. This is a big one. You say this one a lot, especially okay. inside of staff. Vision leaks, stories, stories fill. fill. Vision leaks, stories fail. Yeah, bottom line is we can get excited. The why, the why is vision. Okay, that's that's uh, when when someone communicates the why. Um, we can get excited about a why, but over time, tasks begin to drown out my motivation. And so the the thing that fills us with motivation quicker than any is a story that I can see, feel, um, that then fuels me with a vision that reminds me what I'm doing is making a difference. And so that's why we start all of our staff meetings with stories. That's why we start most of our huddles with stories because we want people to know, hey, what you're doing is so much bigger than a task. What you're doing is making impact. And so 
if you, and that's why I always tell the staff too, I say, Hey, listen, you, you might, you might, uh, be so excited to be here today, but I promise you there are other people who are like, it's a Monday. It feels like a Monday. I'm just here because it was on my calendar. It's a meeting. I'm expected to be here, but you being all in on this meeting today and sharing a story that moved the needle will remind everyone that what you're doing is not just collecting a paycheck. You're moving the needle in eternity, uh, in someone's life. And so let's make sure we come with stories. We're very present because our vision leaks. Stories, Phil. It's good. Save the humans. Mm. Yeah, just look for opportunities to just uh, go beyond policies, procedures, and systems. Now, we are a multi-site. That means it's naturally messy. Um, one of your chief jobs is to make sure we have order um, based on meaning as the executive pastor and looking at systems, looking at operations. One of your jobs is to make sure we have predictable success and we have order. And one of my chief concerns of whining um, on days are when I feel like, ah, if we ever go too far on this end, I'll feel like, oh, we don't feel a human. Um, one of your chief concerns would be, we, this was a mess. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the beautiful tensions that we need to always have is this, not this, t I'm not trying to tug towards a mess and you're not tugging, tugging towards um, uh, a machinery, but we need to both be focused on let's have the kind of order and systems in place where we can uh, fairly predictably pr um, uh, have an idea of what's coming up. But at the same time, uh, play jazz with it and be human. And so the bigger we get, the more we need to emphasize be human. A system will not make someone smile, but a human will. A system isn't led by the spirit, even though it might've been created in a way to, to really help someone experience Jesus, but it's a great system with a live human that God seems to use the most. So save the humans. Don't trust our systems. Okay, um, here's the deal. Always trust your system, but never trust your system. I don't know if we wrote that. That's been an iteration I mean, over the year. No, yeah, the way that we have it here too. I, this has been the hardest. This is always a moving target. Yes. I, I mean, it always is. Like yes. You're trying to find that virtuous mean the whole time and then the organization changes. So then this changes and then you get this right and the organization changes and then the organization yes. stays the same and then this change. Like it's just all, it's back and forth, right? So we talked about this and it says be personal, yeah. think, and then it says great systems trump good staff. We've had really oh. good staff yeah. in the past, yeah. but they're all doing their own thing, which creates this yeah. mess. And yeah. they're great. The staff was incredible, yeah. but we saw things that shouldn't have happened. Or, I mean, exactly like we were talking about on the last thing with, with people not getting followed up on this way or that way, just yes. because it's based on the person, right? Then we said, uh, but great staff who use great systems, they win every time. Yeah. They win every time. Love so that. know the system inside and out. And then be human, right? So there's that yeah. that that tension that whole time within it. If I have to choose, I'm taking a great staff person over a great uh, system anytime. But that's that's leaving a lot on the table. Um, uh, well, I don't know. I don't even know if that's true. Sometimes I would choose a great system because depends great on the systems too, don't right? take like, vacations, <laughs> right? Great <laughs> systems don't get offended. Great <laughs> systems um, don't have seasons of life where they have to like, like bow out for a season. So great systems are good. Great staff are great. But when a great staff takes the will of a great system, now that's that that's the um, uh, I man. I had this phenomenal illustration about this race. <laughs> what are the nice race cars that go international? F1. F1. F1, baby, is when you have a great car and a professional driver, whoa, it'll change a city. I don't, I don't no, know. I like that. No, I like that. I like Michael that. Michael something or other. There's a Michael something or other who's an F1 I don't driver. Know F1. I, don't I know, know his F1. cards are very valuable. Really? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we're gonna go to the next. We're gonna go to the next. We're gonna really? go to the next one. I feel like that's got no, some, no, that's got a lot of momentum no, right there. Felt, I, felt, yeah. I felt like that was a good one. All right, inspect what you expect. Great speeches don't produce results. Daily checkups do. Ah, yeah. I mean, yeah, and that's one of those things. Is inspiration is great. Implementation of inspiration is better. Um, so uh, we just got to look, and that's that's accountability of the systems. Is um, is is a, a constant 
honest conversation of, is this delivering the result we expected, um, that we anticipated? And that's true on a Saturday night message review. That's true um, on any programming. So uh, we just have to, we have to dig deep, man. Do, do the autopsy of why it's not working. Do the health inspection of why it is working. And uh, it's never on autopilot. That's good. Uh, this one, um, I have... I've messed this one up in the past because I've taken this one a couple times uh, in my years as don't uh, inspect what you expect, yes, but don't micromanage. And how is that like? Well, I don't want to. I don't want to really micromanage this. I don't want to. So then I don't even inspect it. Yeah. I'm like, well, well, that's not. Yeah. I need to inspect what I expect, right? So there's there's a difference between micromanagement and inspecting and watching and seeing and having a pulse and knowing what's going on. And like driving the pulse and driving what's going on and driving what that person's doing. Like there's a mm-hmm. difference between that. So I love just thinking of daily checkups, right? Like that's that's the the key to this one for me. Yeah, I think I and I like how you do that. I I, I see you do that all the time. Um you're you're very um intentional about uh, meeting with, with with different team leads and 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 uh evaluating uh, system wise for us. For me, I get stuck in that um, uh, that I don't want to micromanage. Um, and so I, I use that as an excuse sometimes to abdicate something. And then that, that to me is my tendency. If I'm going to err is I'm going to give something to you, be disappointed in the product, but not talk about it. Not you, um, maybe, oh, I mean, thanks. <laughs> but to somebody and then be disappointed, but just not talk about it because I'm like, eh, and now I'm abdicating it instead of leading it. And so, yeah, we got, we got to inspect it and there's systems and we, we've talked about systems where, you know, how do we, how do we have a system of evaluation? Um, and we use all those tools, whether it's strat op tools, whether it's just, um, uh, different conversation pieces that we bring into the table, um, that we have to inspect it. You know, no one's off limits on this one. It's good. Eat the frog. Yeah, do the hard thing first, man. Uh, um, yeah. That's... This one this one became a, a familyism for us. Really? Yeah. The girls now will say, like, they'll be crying, and then they'll be like, I'll just eat the frog. It's usually with schoolwork. Yeah. Because uh, one of them doesn't really like math, and that's the frog. And yeah. she's usually crying with her homework. And she's like, I'll just eat it. I'll just eat a frog. I'll just eat it. <laughs> And it, it could be an email that you I don't want to send. It could right. be a phone call you don't want to make. Um, but do, whether it's the emotional, the physical, do the hardest thing first when you have the most energy. Um, and so for me is we can dance around this. So a lot of times it's like the whole diving board principle. Um, I'm afraid of heights. And, you know, uh, I remember a time in my life where I was at a camp and everyone was like, yeah, you know, go on the diving board. I get on the diving board. I'm like, I don't want to do this. There's nothing about me that wants to jump off this diving board. But then the whole idea is jump and then decide. Just jump. Jump, and then I could decide if I want to or not, right? I quickly decided I don't want to jump, but um, too late, right? Just so sometimes what I'll do if I need to have a difficult phone call, right? Or and that could be a negative thing or a positive thing. Like, man, I need to negotiate a potential opportunity here, or I need to uh, talk to someone about something. Is dial the number, hit send, and then decide if you want to or not. <laughs> now it's too late. Just eat the frog. Just do the tough thing, and and don't wait for inspiration to do, do the tough thing. Uh, just do it the tough thing. That's good. And this, I, I feel like, was this Mark Twain? I don't know. I've heard that, right? The, the uh, whole he has idea. a frog jumping con- competition. Yeah. No, no, eating a frog. The whole idea of that is that if, if eating a frog is part of your job, like your job detail. No, I think it's Samuel Clemens. Oh, was it? Yeah. Well, yeah. they were brothers, right? I think they yeah. are connected. <laughs> <laughs> if that's part of your job, you're going to do that first because that's for sure going to be the hardest thing you do all day yeah. is to eat one, right? Yeah. So that's Here's what, what I know frog. about eating frogs. Yeah. Once you've eaten some frog, yeah. everything else everything tastes like else gravy. Everything else is great. Yeah. Yeah. It's Think like about a it. Cinnabon. Exactly. Like a Cinnabon, the epicenter of it. This one, we're getting close. Yeah. We're not going to get through all these. There's no way. It's going to be a series. It's going to be great. Oh, People word. are so excited right now. Let's, when do, I, let's do one more. Okay, let's, let's do one, do one more. more. <laughs> Unless it's not a good one to end on. This is a good one. I mean, it's it's show them your ask. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Can you over enunciate what you just said? Show them your ask. Never waste a meeting. Always have a big ask in your meetings. Next steps. 
So it's what I said. Ask you're, you're looking. For, yeah. you're looking for a, a, a ask. Yeah, here's the deal. I hate boring isms, and so they gotta have some personality <laughs> to them. And I know we've got HR, and we've got employee policies, and we've got all the fancy rigmarole. That's why we have isms. We need to have a little personality in there. So show them your ask. Winky, wink, wink, wink. Okay. And the whole point is there is is questions often um, motivate someone to take next steps. You said something yesterday. I would love for you to walk through the four things. Uh, you were talking about a book um, that we a- we can ask oh. questions. Walk us through that because I think that's a great example of this. Hermosi. So this guy is a genius. To Hermosi to. with a uh, uh, soft J Her- or Hermosi is it an H? with an H. It's okay. an H, no J in there. Um, but he's talking about he just does some incredible marketing stuff and and runs businesses in a very interesting way. But he was talking about these four things that you can uh, have conversations with with people. And there's, and there's only four ways to do it. There's only four things to do when you're talking about asking someone to do something. You can either talk to somebody that you know, which he would be calling a warm call or a warm reach out. Mm. You could broadcast to people that you know, right? So maybe that's an email, maybe that's a, Not a personal. Text. Right, like it's it's but people that you know, so yeah. it's, a, it's a warm reach out to a, a broader audience, and then there is of a warm breeze, warm breeze, and then there's what's called um, they call it cold calls, right? You've heard that terminology probably yeah. that it's a reach out to somebody that you don't know, and then the last rung on that ladder would be reaching out to multiple people that you don't know. So yeah. that's probably social media, that's a, an email blast that's going out, and those are the only four ways that you're asking somebody. So then it's talking about. Where on that scale do you usually start, right? We were talking about this with a couple of things, even when we're in a situation where we're like, man, we've grown in this area or this area. I think that there could be probably some opportunity for five more volunteers here. For some reason, we always start with like, all right, let's make a social post and make a slide for a service, yeah. which is literally the bottom rung that we're just talking about. The most important one we usually don't hit is, which is just ask somebody that you know, right? Like that ask, when we talk about asking, it's a massive game changer to next steps when you're asking somebody that you know, you have a relationship with, because they're going to end up asking somebody that they know, and they're going to end up asking somebody that they know. Now, there's a time and place for all four of these things, but even when we're just talking about questions and, and asking and next steps and all of that kind of stuff, not even in a meeting setting, there's just a, a systematic way to approach it. So the stuff that he walks through, though, is just so good. I mean, he's got hours on that stuff, which is really fun to listen to. Well, I think sometimes a um, uh, hesitancy to ask uh, feels like, man, I don't want to put that pressure on you, these kind of things. And I think that's a selfish, wrong motivation when we're talking about church. Like mm-hmm. if I'm asking for money from you personally, maybe I need to feel that way. But if I'm asking for you, uh, asking about you volunteering, if I'm asking about you giving towards this, toward the Dream Center, or towards this initiative, it's not about me. And so why would it be awkward? Either I don't believe in the mission or I think it's about my mission. That's the only reason it could be awkward. But if I believe in this mission and I know it's not about me, I'm giving you an opportunity to partner with something. And then it's not offensive if you say no. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm excited about this mission. I sense that you are too, because it's warm. Why in the world wouldn't I give you the opportunity? Because this might leverage um, an opportunity for you to partner with this mission in a way that you are gifted to do or prepared to do. So if I have the mission right, if the arrows are out, the mission is right, um, then my motivation is pure, then it's a great opportunity to ask. I don't need to use pressure. I just give you an opportunity mm-hmm. and it's not awkward because it's not about me. The most insulting thing you can do is make it about you. You don't want to be on my team. You don't want to give towards what I asked for. If it's about you, you've insulted them. Um, it's, and it's not thank you for helping me today. It's thank you for providing an opportunity for people to hear from Jesus today. What you did was awesome. <clears throat> it's, an, <clears throat> it's an honor to be able to partner with you in this mission. And so show them your ask, baby. Show them your ask. Yeah. That's right. And I so. think that on that, uh, Jen Davis ran us through an incredible all staff yes. on what it looks like to call people and ask. And most of these, these names 
are in our database because they've been inside of North Point in some way. They're which saying, is, I like your mission. Yeah, I like your I'm mission. Can I be some, involved? <laughs> for some reason, either I haven't shown up or for some reason I continue to show up and I'm not serving. Like these are all warm reach outs. And for some reason we get into this mindset that it's a cold thing and right. it's like, well, they wouldn't want us to bother them. Yeah. They came through the doors. They're looking for something, make them feel known and needed, yeah. right? So the stuff that she shared with the staff, she's just... It was incredible. It was just yeah. so practical, so helpful. So yeah, this is a, this is a good one. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Hey, we'll uh, we'll look at some more isms on our next episode. But hey, I hope you have a great week. Thanks for spending some time with us, and uh, we'll catch you real soon. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Riff. We'll have a brand new episode every week wherever you find podcasts.